to CCC, Clay's Canucks Commentary. And through CCC, I will follow the Vancouver Canucks for as long as they are in the 2010 NHL playoffs. In it, I will offer reflections, insight, guest editorials, and of course, commentary. I intend to make the content as original as possible, rather than just repeating what I hear on TV, read in the papers, or see on the internet. Now, I'm not a reporter, I'm not a broadcaster, I'm just one huge Canucks fan. No, that came out wrong. I'm a big Canucks fan. No, that's, that's just as bad. What I mean is my devotion to this hockey team is huge. That's big, as opposed to me, or... How about this? Just like many of you, I'm a passionate Canucks fan. And I'm the ultimate Canucks fan as well. At least winning the Canucks contest in back-to-back -back years tells me so. I'm doing this first ever CCC on the morning of Wednesday, April the 14th. The day before our beloved Canucks take on the Los Angeles Kings in first round NHL playoff action. So on the eve of this first game, I thought I'd offer up my top five reasons. Top five reasons why the Vancouver Canucks will defeat the Los Angeles Kings. Number one, world domination. The Canucks had seven players playing in the 2010 Winter Olympics. Luongo, Kessler, the Sedins, Salo, Erhoff, and Dimitra. By contrast, the LA Kings only had five Olympians. That would be Dowdy, Brown, Johnson, Quick, and Hansus. Now sure, four of their five players ended up winning medals as opposed to three of the Canucks, but hey, they didn't have the tournament's leading scorer with a gold medal winning goalie. Which brings me to number two, Roberto Luongo. Oh yes, Captain Canuck. Don't worry about him. He had another 40 win season and he's proven he can perform on the big stage. Just like when Boyce II Men came to Vancouver in the mid 90s. He thrives under pressure. As for Jonathan Quick, he did indeed have a good year, a very good year, and his stats are virtually identical to Luongo's. But ask yourself, Canucks fans, who would you rather have in net? The gold medal winning goalie or a guy named after chocolate milk? Number three, taking the offensive. We have the Art Ross Trophy winner in Henrik Sedin. His brother Daniel outscored the Kings leading scorer, Anze Kopitar, by four points in 19 less games. The Kings will work hard, led by Kopitar, Brown, and the wily veteran Ryan Smith. But we should be able to fill the Kings net with three decent, balanced scoring lines. Number four, no place like home. If the series comes down to seventh and deciding game, it will indeed be in the familiar confines of GM Place. Now although the Kings had a strong road record, the Canucks had the best home record in the Western Conference, amassing 30 wins in 41 games. That's why it was so important to win the Northwest Division. And number five is longevity. Simply put, if the Canucks don't advance past the Kings, I'll have no desire nor reason to continue doing these commentaries. Clay's Kings commentary or Clay's Colorado commentary doesn't really have the same ring to it. All right, let's be real. Given that these two teams only finished two points apart from each other in the standings, it would not be a massive upset if the Kings won. However, it would make me massively upset. But I'm not worried. Given these five reasons, world domination, Roberto Luongo, taking the offensive, home ice advantage, and of course, the longevity of the CCC, the Canucks will win in six games. Besides LA, what you gonna do when Kessler and Burles run wild on you? Enjoy the games, God bless, and go Canucks go.